Welcome everyone to Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews. This is Thomas for you today with the all-new Volkswagen Touran. So this is not a facelift like in the Charan, the bigger version kind of this car. Of course, it's a completely different car, but you also find the Charan facelift review in our video description. This one, however, is now the all-new generation of the Touran. And we have two cars here today again. The TDI, the diesel, and the TSI, the turbo petrol engine. Um, both same trim level, but it will still be very exciting to compare the cars because they're a little bit different from the inside. So, of course, we're going to talk about, again, the exterior, all the changes, the interior, because we've got new features in there. Also, what has changed on the technological side here with the Turan, and we're going to drive both the diesel and the petrol engine. So, join us for this review and let's have some fun and of course, some very good information for you. So since 2003, the Turan has been sold over 2 million times worldwide and especially in Germany, it's a very successful car. It is a top-selling van, this mid-size van here or MPV, multi-purpose vehicle. And so it's also among the top 15 most selling cars in Germany overall. So big success in Germany. Well, here right now we're in the Netherlands and well, also worldwide quite significant, significant this car. And it has already overtaken the Charan. And well, as it is looks right now, I can tell you this will continue and I'll give the reasons for that. The new entry price will be 23,500 euros in Germany but with the highest trim level and a lot of equipment, you can easily also top it up over 40,000 euros. However, it's still way more cheaper than the Charan. What else is there to mention inside the Volkswagen Corporation between the other models? Well, it's about 30 centimeters shorter than the Charan. It is more versatile than the Golf variant and it has longer trunk space, especially than the Golf Sports van. So you can, how you actually see the car. What is the most important technological change? It's a new platform, the MQB platform, with the famous German word Modularer Querbaukasten, which means it's a modular transverse building platform Volkswagen is using. They can save money by that because different cars can be built on the same platform. However, they can still be somehow different. And this has also been used here and results into weight savings up to 62 kilograms. And they also say 20% of reduction in the fuel consumption, but we'll talk more about that one, of course, later. Let's now get into the details with the exterior and the interior. Starting here with the front, you see we don't have a 3D Volkswagen logo anymore because the sensors are hidden behind that for all the assistance systems, which are optionally. And I do criticize it because I think the emergency braking system should be included. It's only included here with the comfort line, but I, it's a middle trim level. I think it should start right away. So please Volkswagen engineers or marketing product, product managers include it in every car like Volvo does. So what we see here, for example, the new headlights, they got this very sharp look here and I really liked it because it makes the car really looking modern. Then we have three elegant horizontal fins going all the way and they are transported into the headlight like we've seen with the all new Volkswagen Passat. And I think that's also a very nice design feature. Here in the high line, top trim level, also on the exterior, we got a stronger front bumper. However, if you want to have it looking even more aggressive, there can also be a new R-Line ordered, so if you want to have this family car but still want to be looking very sporty, you can also order the R-Line for the exterior and also for the interior. Then you have even stronger bumpers on the front side and also at the rear. The biggest change resulting from the new MQB platform, we see it right here at the side because the car is way longer, 13 centimeters longer and 11 centimeters longer is the wheelbase. So the most of the space the car got longer, it's really the wheelbase and it's now 2 meters 79. And this will of course result into more space, especially for the legs for the rear passengers then. So that will be a very important aspect here. We'll also soon show you in the interior. From design here on the exterior, uh, well, there's been some quite small changes, let's say it, because the general design of the car 
rather remain the same. It's also been sharpened up here at the side where we see it's very strong design line going in. You couldn't do that like 20 years ago or something like that, building it that way. And then it's going all the way up here, even through the tank cap here, the fuel cap, until the tail lights. And I think that is, if you say so, a little bit brave already in this class, because this class is rather conservative also as for the design. And I really liked it that they actually dared to do something like that. You see here in the high line, there are also bigger alloys included. Not these ones. These ones are the 18-inch alloys. They are still optional. However, with the middle trim level, the comfort line, you get 16-inch. High line, 17-inch. This one here, optional, 18-inch. And 17 and 18-inch also, by the way, counts for the R-line I spoke of. So you get either 17 from the R-line standard or 18 also optional. And this B-color scheme, they also look quite fancy. Do you have to be afraid to scratch them? Mm, I'm not so sure. Well, you still got some wheel space left and you see the tires are a little bit um, overlapping the alloys. So I think that should be quite okay. And I can tell you the comfort is also still good here with the 18 inch alloys and they make this family car, which you know, is rather bulky from the general design perspective, also make look quite of elegant together with the new design lines. I just heard the question from one of you. What is this color called? This very special blue color. It's called Caribbean blue. I think it's pretty much fitting because, you know, if you maybe been to Curaçao, it would be fitting to our uh, friends in the Netherlands. Then you really see uh, such waters there. And I like it when the blue is very strong. If it's not this blue, we can't really differentiate. Is it blue or black or very dark green? This one here clearly can be seen as blue. And I also prefer it to the white car we also pretty much soon see. Then in the rear we got the new taillights, nothing more actually, but um, you see it's the same kind of design scheme than the front lines and I think it's quite good that they also carried on with this same design scheme. But the rest you see it's more again this form follows function that we still have a lot of space inside and this car is of course more about the inside and we're going to dig deeper into that right now. You always want to see the key. This is it. Standard Volkswagen key, which they look now as a modern. And I think it's also not too, well, it's quite heavy actually, but that always creates a quality impression. We don't need the real key here because we got it all keyless here. And it, by the way, it says also Caribbean blue metallic. So just to prove, let's get in. And you know, one thing the Volkswagen always have good, that they have good quality with the door handles and also when you close the doors. Actually, the car is so well isolated here everywhere that it can be actually hard to close the door just gently because you know they have to fight against the, pr the air pressure of the isolation just a side note so and then let's get inside this is mqb platform so it, it means it's all seem like the actual the current golf 7 and that makes this modern look here also in the interior also if you compare it to the charan the charan was already very refined but was still on the old platform and here you can see it's the high line trim level with this beautiful seats here with the combination Alcantara on the inside. And you see it's a very soft Alcantara. I can tell you it's a dream to sit on there, really. And then this fabric material on the outside. Actually, I think these are one of the best seats I've seen and also tested so far. But I'll take a seat at that quite soon. Then you see this Golf 7 steering wheel, all with this shiny black elements. You have to really keep them clean though. But if they are clean, they really look fancy. So then let's get inside and we keep all the windows open because it's very warm today. So let's take a seat here. And I can just stress again, these seats are really superb because first of all, they got this Alcantara surface, but then they're also soft like in the first step. And then again at the outside, they offer you enough feedback here also while driving. I think this is really a perfect combination and you already got the high seating position. Of course, I'm now leaning back because we're on a small hill here. 
but also for tall people there's not so much space left here between the knees so also I'm 1.86 in meters that's really fine by that so really great seats and I'm not sure if they may be even a little bit better than uh, in, in the Charan, but I think they are also comparable, so both very well done here. General impression of the cockpit is very clean again, and even more refined than in the Charan because we got the Golf 7 equipment here now. And a lot of things also remind me of the Passat, for example, because if you see the vents, and also you see there's a soft plastic touch here, so it's not really hard stuff. It also looks very good. Um, here you see this, this sharp design scheme from the headlights and the taillights. It's continued also in the interior. It's also a nice idea. And because we got the most modern platform here from Volkswagen, we also can include here in the Highland the biggest GPS. See with the proximity sensor for the touch buttons. And here this is the map where we are. Netherlands, of course, a lot of water here in the Netherlands. Greetings to all our fans in the Netherlands, by the way. Here, this is the proximity sensor then. Then I can, for example, put a new goal here in, new destination. Um, but of course, I can also use the buttons. And um, the newest app features are in here that you can, can connect your phones and mirror them. And of course, you asked me if I can change the language here. And yes, I can put it to, to English. Let's put to British English. And there you can see also how well I can control everything because everything is very intuitive also from the menu. Either I can use, use here the, the turning knob or I can also use it like an iPad. And so that's very well balanced. Use the touch screen here. See also we got the to run, the weird tire pressure just to, to show you how it really looks. But the most important is here the, the GPS. And I really like these GPS because you can use it like an iPhone or iPad, browse around here, zoom in again. And I've also tested it to, to the destination right here and it was working flawlessly. And also the reaction times is very fast. So I really like this very big GPS server. However, you always have to pay it extra. It always costs a lot of money, about 2000 euros. And that's of course always very heavy in the investment. <laughs> But this is, by the way, the uh, phone connection here for the for the Bluetooth. And what else will be available? Whoa, that's quite loud. What will be available? Um, it will actually be appear up here when you got the option. There is a speech amplifier as well. Here, it's for example, we say navigation. Let's say that one. Pardon. Navigation. Navigation. Next command. Yeah, nice. So, you see, this is basically working. This is a normal um, a speech to text or speech to command function. And what also will be possible, it will appear in the upper right, and this is a speech amplifier that you can actually talk here, and then the rear passengers, your children, can hear your voice even louder. Not included here yet, but it will be available later. Air conditioning unit, a little bit low, but still you can control and see everything very well. Good overview. Temperature also feels good when turning it. How fast, how actually, how, where it should come from. Then this is optionally heated steering wheel combined with the seat heating. Um, actually, the Golf Sportsman also had that, that it's both combined. Sometimes you think, okay, maybe in winter this is good, but maybe you just want to have one thing of it. Um, and this is also possible that way in the screen above here. You see, when you have clicked that, then you can also activate the heated steering wheel manually. So you do not have to put it at both at the same time. You can also change it then. It's actually a quite good solution that it's possible here. In the Golf Sports when you had to search the menu even longer to do that. But that's a good solution they found here. Of course, now at the moment, I just think about the automatic climate control. Then. Below the climate unit, we see a USB entry. Also, this is for the AUX and then 12 volt power supply. And we get a very beautiful starting knob here, just in front of the shifting lever. I think it also feels very good. And I think this haptics this is also very important. And Volkswagen always pays a lot of attention to it. 47, almost 50 storage spaces here in the Volkswagen Touran, the all new. You see, this is one of them for the drinks. It's actually quite a good system because then drinks at 
different sizes are kept tight and not are flying around. So I think it is a very good system. However, pushing this button here lowers that one a little bit. I'm not sure what it's actually used for, but maybe someone of you knows what this button is for then. I don't know. But again, very good solution because I'm just also driving a Seat Leon ST Cupra. There's also a review of that already on our channel. And there it's kind of left open and the bottles, they're vibrating around. Another small storage space here. And then there's a big storage space on the, no, sorry, on the armrest. And you see, this is quite a clever solution because it also says here trash. You can take it out and then empty this trash, not inside your car, of course, <laughs> but somewhere else. It's a very good solution, especially for your family because, you know, the kids are drinking something in the behind it. Oh, mom, dad, where can I put my trash? Here's the place. More storage spaces for the family. One up here hidden. Actually, quite a nice solution. You see, it's also in the same design, in dynamic design scheme here. Same accounts for that one here. This is hidden for the SD slots or for a SIM. And you can also put still a classic CD here. Then the glove box is sliding down a little bit too fast, I think. It could be sliding a little bit smoother down, but also some good storage space in here. Also a coin holder in here and maybe here for, for an ice scraper or, or whatever. And very huge at the inside of the doors. You have a lot of space and that is especially important because you can, for example, also put huge water bottles there. So another one right here. It's actually at the co-driver and the driver seat. Another hidden storage space. Also very good. You can really put so much stuff in here. By the way, if you think it's Jurassic World uh, time here, it's just some dogs playing in the background. And like in the Sharan, the bigger brother, you also have some spaces here in the ceiling. Also another one in the back here. I'm not sure if you should use that one because I was also be afraid something is falling down there. But maybe you've also experienced with putting some things in here. So let's get in the rear department because that is really important here. And you see it from both perspectives here. The doors are really opening very wide and have a huge space here to get inside. So it's also very easy to fix the child seat here. The Isofix hinges are just right here. And so really easy access here. And that's very important for the family. And then the seat is as I would be driving. You know, we have 11 seaters more, 11, 11 centimeters more on the, um, in the wheelbase. And that makes a lot of space here on the interior. Really has improved. And you really have to think about if this car is so not much longer now, but still compact on the outside. Why should you go for the Chevrolet? A lot of people are thinking exactly like that and save some money. Of course, the Chevrolet offers even more space. Yes, definitely. But still, you've got already a lot. But look at that. I mean, there's really a lot of leg room still left here. These tables here, I'm not sure. This is not really the common Volkswagen quality we are used to. It's a little bit, I don't know. But it actually, if you compare it to the Chevrolet or as we've seen in the Tiguan, this one can be make very even. It's not like like this, that the bevels are almost spilled. So this is actually an improvement, but still, I think, not my favorite feature still. It's, by the way, included if you have the middle trim level, the comfort line, then they already come with me here. Then what I think is very nice, that the design scheme with the dynamic lines is always carried on in very small details. But there's just really a design deal in here. What's more important on the basic side is that you can move the seats to the front and the back. So you're very flexible. You can make your trunk even larger behind you. Or of course, for people like me with long legs, you can move them all the way to the back. And that is actually possible for every single seat here, which is very good. And the high class quality seat is also carried here onto the back. Then what is also from CU production is this fold flat seats just pull this one here and then you have an even loading space all until the back. There are also seven seater versions available. We don't have one here right now. Then you just have some some space here in the underfloor left. We can um, soon show you from behind also but you can also open it right here. Then there's some space you know they have made it that way that you have this even loading space because that's important for a lot of people and then you can put some secret stuff in here. So you see a very versatile back here and I really love that. 
there are hardly any other cars that are matching this one and uh, you see from this space here we have here behind i think it's it is definitely class leading in the mid-size vans i think and by the way there's also a three zone climate available that um, you can so you see it right here I put on the ignition and you should also be able to see yes it is working now so this is the optional three zone climate function that you can also change the temperature for the rear passengers and of course two zones in the front this one is included in the high line the top trim level we have here right now and another storage space here right behind also so you can put whatever in there and it's sliding back automatically Hey Thomas, what about the headspace? Yes, I won't leave that one out. You know, regular autofill viewers, they really know meanwhile how tall I am. However, if you're not having watched autofill regularly so far, you will in future, definitely, trust me. I'm uh, 1 meters 86 and you see this kind of headspace is left here and that is really plenty of headspace. Of course, it will be reduced if you put some panoramic roof in here, but without one, and even with the panoramic roof, it would be still okay here. So also headroom-wise, a lot of space here. And I think the seating position in general is also still very upright here. So I'm also like with an adult driver here in the back, no problem. I think even with five adults, it should be pretty much fine, I think. Because also the middle seat, well, it is a little bit harder than these ones are softer here. You see my hand is sinking in here. The middle seat is harder actually, but if you like it hard, then it's maybe something for you. Uh, even hard to put the headrest up. That's maybe one point. I don't know. Because the side headrest here, this is actually quite easy to put it up. But this one here, it actually should work the same way. There's also no function to flip it off automatically. I'm not sure if it's because it's a very early car, but this one is really... Oh, Re oh, now it's... Phew. Okay. By the way, hidden space here. If you don't want to use it, then you have a really comfortable armrest. Also nice solution. If you want to sit here, it is still possible for a fifth adult. No problem here whatsoever. Let's take a look at the trunk. By the way, it says here 2.0 TDI. We also checked on the petrol engine later, but there's of course nothing to do with the trunk. We get the electric opening here. This foot opening mechanism is also available now for the Turan optionally. It's not included right here now. And you see quite huge opening. It's all, well, let's say 1.85 or something like that. And then what is very good, you see I always moan about this very wobbly covers here for the trunk. This one is really good because you can just press it once, like in the Passat, press it twice, and then it's gone all the way. And it's really fixed here because you see it's right and the left side. You cannot really do any mistake here. Actually, very good solution. And then you see you've got a lot of space, just some more small space below that here. Then, as I said, the sixth and the seventh seats would be hidden right here then. You can easily flip them up then. And then there are also the same system like in the Charan, where we can then fix some nets or something like that in here. You see, seen it in the surround video this one here by the way for example this net you can put out then and you have some space to secure stuff as well so 1000 liters is the standard one and if you flip all the seats i can do that just for a second if you flip all of the seats then we have this very even loading space and then it offers up to 1900 liters and that is again class leading as vw claims and Oh, again, the middle seat is quite hard to, to uh, flip, actually. The side seats, it's very easy. Yeah, and I, actually, I, I don't deny that, that it's class leading because it really offers a lot of space with this 1,900 liters. Oh, really hard, you have to be strong for that. So, this is the even loading space here now and if you want to put some skiers in here you can even put them way more down to the front of course you can also remove this one here you see it's you can push it to one side and if you have pushed it to the one side you can easily also take it out all the effort just for you <laughs> 
What do you think about the loading area here from the all new Durand? I think considering the car is only 4.52 meters in length, that's really much and all the space is used here. And that's of course one reason because they didn't do this very, very fancy outside. The reason is, okay, first the space inside and then we can see what we can do from the outside. And by the way, that it's actually possible to have more seats here and here, here. You see, this is the seat belt here. And let me just check, I think it's the one here for the middle seat because that one is not included right here. Yes, it is. And that's a good way to show you. This one comes around in here. And you actually have also a full seat bed here for the middle seat. And actually for the other seats, there would be, of course, additional seat belts in. And this is very, oh, very hard to put. Maybe that one could have been made a little bit. So a small dog test here. Good boy, good boy, yeah. So you see, it's also very well possible. He also likes it. A lot of big dogs are also fitting in here. So by the way, for the electric opening and closing, I, we always want to test if it's really child safe. And you know, I got a quite strong arm. So let's just test it. Oh, that really hurts. Actually, I think it should be more sensitive. Let's see how it's... Uh, I think it takes too long until it stops. Espe oh, especially when going down, it's so heavy. And well, I wouldn't have my child here actually. So that would, could maybe address to the engineers, make it more sensitive for something that could be stuck beneath that. So this is the auto fuel special feature here with a small dog who doesn't want to give the ball back. They can throw it again. Engine check. You see, it's a very good opening mechanism here, very easy. You just have to open it from the inside. <laughs> Again, the dogs are strolling around here. And then it's really easy. And also, auto fuel, hydraulic, damper, check, everything is fine. This is a 2-liter TDI, actually. And um, now, to give you the basic overview again, it's a 1.6-liter TDI available with 110 horsepower. And then the 2-liter TDI with here 150. And later on, with 190. And the horsepower figures, actually, for the petrol engine and diesels are quite the same. You can just remember 110, 150 and 180 horsepower. Well, 190 horsepower for the diesel, 180 for the petrol engine. The two strong engines will come a little bit later on. This one here, however, is also 150 horsepower engine. So again, just to um, mention it again, because it's very complicated with all the horsepower figures. We got both 150 horsepower engines here today. However, the diesel has two liter displacement and this one here has 1.4 liter of displacement. And the smaller engine of the petrol one, 110 horsepower, has 1.2 liter of displacement and the top one will have 1.8 liter. Do you remember all the figures? Just scroll back in the video and listen to it again. You see the difference in the petrol and TDI. The petrol engine doesn't have this beautiful cover. You can see more of it actually. And soon with the driving review, we'll tell you how they actually feel differently when driving. So before we go driving, just as a comparison, this petrol engine car from the outside, how is the color called? Maybe, what's your guess? Pure white is it, just pure white and I think it is definitely pure white. I think these are actually my favorite colors for this car. I think I would go with the blue, it's a little bit more unique and who doesn't want to drive a car in Caribbean blue? Hey, my car is Caribbean blue. Come on, <laughs> even better than the white, isn't it? Or what's your opinion? Which color would you pick actually? You see, just everything else is the same just want to show you also different color because you always tell me show us different colors, trim levels and so on because that's also very exciting always. And now let's take a look at the interior. It's just slightly different as well.
So we'll take a look inside here. It's also the Highline equipment, but it has a different color here on the inside of the seats. You see the other one was rather in this gray style. This is a little bit brownish, and I think it's not that prone to stains, I would say. So pick, pick this one maybe if you want to spill something on it. The other ones are brighter and then of course um, not that resistible against some kinds you spill on it. Um, but of course, well, I think the gray ones, they look better than the brown ones. However, they are also quite stylish here. You see the brown scheme is also carried on with the shoulder parts here. Everything else here is basically the same. But we can also show you how the brown style looks in the rear department. So that's it. I think it's also very nice that they carry it on the same design scheme here. Again, the seats very soft here, especially on the outside. So tell me what you think would what would you pick as an interior? And also very important, would you pick the Highline level anyway, or would you go maybe for a lower version? Because well the Highline it is actually expensive, but what makes the car really expensive are the things that's coming on top of the Highline, like GPS and all the assistance system and so on. Well, you should pick the necessary ones for the safety, but the rest I think you don't have to pick everything the car is offering actually, because then it just gets too expensive. Let's start driving. Starting here with the petrol engine, 1.4 liters, 150 horsepower and we got the dual clutch transmission here DSG this one is of course optional always a lot of money always extra but I think it does pay off because on the one hand the car is really very relaxing to drive if you drive it very slowly and if you want to drive a little bit sportier then it offers you really fast shifting possibilities that's actually very good the steering wheel is quite soft actually from the surface and from the steering itself so it's very easy handling here and yeah I just I really I really like it as I said the seating position is really good very upright so I can also imagine going a very long way in this car I'll be gaining off some wooden barriers yeah suspension is definitely set on comfort but it's actually not too soft so we got a small area here where we can also just cruise the car a little bit around also make some turning tests and yeah I mean we got a quite long wheelbase here already with 2 meters 79 but however for this kind of wheelbase it's still quite agile to drive I must say of course it feels more agile than the Volkswagen Chevron the bigger one the Chevron even well feels a little bit heavier it is obviously of course it can be a little bit more relaxing let's say it that way because we also have more space here especially in the front part but the advantage is here when I'm not turning just on standstill very small turning circle really here and that makes it so good for city driving here the Volkswagen to run and because well it's very important we have this family and want to have a lot of space inside but still you don't want to have a huge car because then you don't find any any space in the parking lot and that is still possible with that one here by the way, here we got all of the info, uh, infotainment and also the assistance systems. For example, um, also a lane assist and then I can just take my hands off the steering wheel and it's keeping it in the same lane here and I've tested it on the motorway. Um, it's not made for autonomous driving, it's more like an assistant and help when you're maybe getting tired and like, uh, whoa, what's happening? And then, you know, the lane assist kept you in the lane. If you want to misuse this for autonomous driving, the car says, uh-uh, do not do that. That's like first thing is bing, and later on it's really making just a short braking process. It really gets shaken up and says, no, don't do that. It's mainly a system for the motorway. As I said earlier, the front assist, which also includes the city emergency brake, is not included from TV equipment. I don't like that most of you will have that if you buy this car as a new one because I think not well just a little people we go for the standard equipment most of you will at least pick the comfort line or maybe even higher to and then the front assist is also available that some at low speeds the car can be braking autonomically when you're not seeing it didn't pay so much attention here so 
let's make a right turn in here. Again, very nice handling of the steering wheel. Also, the petrol engine is very silent. It has a very evolved feeling of driving the car. That's also quite nice. Sound insulation is very good. Also very silent in here. It's good when you talk to your children. As I said earlier, it will be possible also option to have the speech amplifier. That's you get heard better. But I mean, I'm not sure if it's really necessary because the car is silent already. I'm not sure. Maybe it's a technical feature that your children find. Wow, cool! Daddy is speaking. We are the speakers. I'm not sure, but I wouldn't go for it because it also costs some extra money than always. Let's check the consumption because we can also compare it to the diesel here then. You can always check that in the small middle screen here. And um, actually someone has reset the trip until we park the car last time, so I can't tell you right now, but I'll tell you soon. Um, the diesel is actually quite um, fuel saving. You can drive it with about 5 liters at 2 liter DDI. This one here, 1.4 liter petrol engine. Let's see how it behaves the next kilometers and then we can make an, well, a small assumption. But right now I'm guessing it will be about 7 liters, something like that just from my experience with these kind of engines. Still, I really prefer the petrol engine because it's so silent when running. The diesel is always creating this typical diesel sound a little bit. Um, and that just makes you a more relaxed feeling. However, if you push the throttle down, then the TDI has an advantage because with equal horsepower the diesel always has more torque and you really feel that here. So if you're more for motorway driving and also want to overtake some people then maybe do get the diesel or the stronger petrol engine with 180 horsepower later. That one will also be very good for motorway. Now if I'm at 19 want to get to let's say 110, let's push on the throttle. One, two, three, four, four and a half seconds now from 90 to 110. You see, you can't make any acceleration wonders with that car than here in this equipment. However, the rear mirror is, by the way, very nice. Hi there, guys. It has, it has no frame, actually, and that is very elegant style. And so, so now someone will be overtaking us. We see there's also this warning indicators in the side mirrors. That is another assistance system. The blind spot warner, very good. I think I would go for the blind spot warner. Um, the front assist, of course, which is already included in the comfort line. And then the automatic cruise control, which is also very good. It's keeping the distance to the car in front of you. I would also always go for that. It's so relaxed here on the motorway. And I mean, now here we got this. Uh, it's not active. Let, let me just check if there's really the um, this lane assist. Here as well, and it's not, ah, it was deactivated. So that's now activated because you can always deactivate each assistant system. Now it's activated. I got the automatic cruise control and the lane assist. Well, it's like I was someone else would be driving. Nothing can. It, usually I would go off the right side. Now it's very interesting. And now I'm reducing speed because now now it says take over the steering. Thomas, take over the steering. Don't do that. I'm still not doing it. Let's see. Because like ah, you see, it's still steering a little bit itself. Very interesting feeling, by the way. Now it's again overtake the steering. Now well, there now this is the red traffic light. And um, well, the last time I was on the motorway. Let's see if it maybe comes and they had had this sudden that it just braked to wake me up, kind of, to say, you're really evil, Thomas. Doesn't do it right now. But I could, I can tell you, it did it last time. That, that's actually, because yeah, we want, want not to use it for autonomous driving yet, because there's also a problem with governmental regulations. It's not always, you know, allowed to have this autonomous driving situations already. You have to fix something else for that. It's a really interesting system. Um, I'm not sure, I don't like the side assist that much. Well, maybe in a situation where you really got tired and missed the lane, then it can be quite important. But usually when you're really awake and seeing everything, then it can be a little bit annoying because the steering wheel is corrected kind of. And that, you know, for usual 
very enthusiast car driver, you don't want to be corrected in steering. However, the automatic cruise control, I'm really used to that. I really like it when the motorway is also maybe full of traffic. You can just put the speed and then let the car do itself. That's very, very much fine. Yeah, now I'm riding for a lot of minutes and still very comfortable with these seats, really superb seats. I can just stress that. And I think there's hardly any car that gives you for this price, this kind of space and this riding comfort in this class and this kind of high quality here in the interior. So I must really say, really totally convinced with driving here the all new Volkswagen to run. So everyone, let's switch to the diesel, also 150 horsepower, but of course more torque, as I've already told you. The petrol engine, by the way, went between 7 and 8 liters, but it can go a little bit lower. Generally, you can say the diesel consumes about 2 liters of fuel less than the petrol engine. That really depends on how many kilometers a year to drive. 20,000 a year and more, then maybe go for the diesel below that one go with the petrol engine just from the sound the petrol engine is better and also when you like driving very slowly it feels even smoother let's take it that way especially in combination with the DSG now we also have the manual drive and I think one that is quite good because you have hardly any resistance when shifting so it also feels high class and that is very well done so I'm usually a fan of a DSG or automatic gearbox, but I would still be okay if I have such a well-evolved shifting lever here and the whole process is quite okay, I think. So, and then let's see how the diesel behaves differently. As I said, it has more torque, so it also feels a little bit more powerful. When I push the throttle, you immediately feel the drive then. And it's the reason because equal horsepower than the diesel has this more torque. And later on there will also be the stronger diesel available. It's the same two liter horsepower, uh, two liter of displacement, but then 190 horsepower instead of this 150 here now. In general, I think this 150 horsepower diesel is a very good price performance um, thingy for this car here because the horsepower is really enough. Also for the motorway, I've um, just tested it on, on the motorway as well. That was really fine also for overtaking process. So that could be maybe well, one of the best picks here probably. Uh, however, me personally, I would, because um, well, it, if I would not ride above 20,000 kilometers, I would still go for the petrol engine. Um, I think also the petrol engine was one of the but it was basically enough for the car, definitely. So you do not need the more powerful petrol engine could be still be okay. Maybe the even weaker petrol engine, the 1.2 liter with displacement, mm, would not go for that actually. So better go for the middle petrol engine or the middle diesel then. Because when you put a lot of people in the back there and a lot of stuff, then it will also make a difference. So shifting down here now, also less resistance here on the shifting lever, driving again don't need so long steering ways. That's actually quite good also. Let me just switch the lane here. It's also very easy to drive car. And you feel also the difference with the Charan we've tested just last week. You really feel the car is short and more agile to drive. And that it's also actually more fun to drive, I must say. So also from the driving characteristics really sets the benchmark here in this class. Diesel now, you maybe also hear it, it's a little bit louder than just from the engine. But if I, for example, go now at higher speeds, fourth gear from 70 to, let's say, 70 to 90 now. Hammer throttle now. That's it. Quite, kind of easy, actually, with the fourth gear now. And um, I can also do something else in the third gear then. Let me do, for example, now 60 to 80 in the third gear. Starting now, one, two, three, about three seconds from 60 to 80 in the, in the third gear. So it really feels better now on the motorway when, for example, when, when overtaking here with the diesel. That's actually really quite good for the long mileage runs. 
yeah, what do you think? What do you get for such impressions from telling you here about the car, about the driving experience? Again, be it the petrol engine or the diesel, they are both really very good. I think also these middle engines here with the 150 horsepower, they are both actually a good pick because you know you can't always um, just pick the most powerful engine because someone has to pay it. So let me conclude about the all-new Volkswagen Turan. I think it's a very convincing concept. I think this is the benchmark now in the mid-size van class and for the MPVs. And I think it, it can also be a problem for creators of bigger vans, even inside the corporation with the Charan or the Seat Alhambra, because this is really a good entry price. For example, the German price, 30, um, 23,500 euros. I mean, it's 9,000 euros cheaper than the Charan in the entry price. And already on the inside, you've got so much space. Of course, a van of the size of the Charan or Renault Espace, or for example, the Ford S-Max has even more trunk. But for most people, this space will be enough, especially for the rear passengers. You just lose a little bit of the length in the trunk. But I think most people will get along with this very well. So I think this is really setting sales on taking all of the bigger vans as well because of the very clever concept on the inside. That's now on this new platform, the very modern platform of Volkswagen also helps the car because we got the most modern infotainment system available here from the Volkswagen Corporation and we also got this weight savings and also the fuel consumptions. They look actually also quite promising so far. Both engines we tested here today were also very convincing I must say. I did like the petrol engine more, although it's a little bit weaker because same horsepower, a little bit more torque. Still, I liked the combination from petrol engine and the DSG, a dual clutch transmission, is a very good combination, I think. Also, I prefer the Caribbean blue from the pure white, but both also think good exterior colors they have in the choice here. And well, the interior part was the most important one because you saw this very elegant cockpit with all the high class materials. The seats really speak for themselves. They are very good. Well, there's hardly anything to criticize. What you found is that the safety mechanism, that um, the hatch is kind of, you know, when you put your hand uh, inside, then it's not really stopping. So it can be dangerous for children. I think they have to improve that actually. And I would also pick, put the front assist, the emergency city braking from the standard equipment, not only with the middle trim level, but anything else was really perfect in the uh, in how they actually conducted everything. You see also in the details from the turns, from the, from the knobs and turning levers and so on, that, that was really convincing as well. So I think for such a van, yes, still form follows function, but what they could do design-wise with this sharp design in the front, also the sideline, they did it also very well. And it's still very important that you not say, okay, we're going just on the design and forget about the core values of the car. They didn't do that. They really stick to the core values of this car. And therefore, I think the success of this car will even be higher than it has been before. Or what's your opinion on the car, on the colors, on the exterior, on the interior, and also what we told you about the driving? Really looking forward to your comments and I thank you very much again for watching Auto Gefühl. By the way, if you want to support us, I'm not even sure how it's actually evolving, but there is this Patreon website now where you can also donate as something. It's totally voluntarily and um, we're just trying it out right now. So also check that in the video description. There's a link to this Patreon website. Don't have any experience with it, but we can just test it out. So if you want to support Autogefühl even more, besides liking, commenting and maybe recommending us, there's even another way than now. So thank you very much again and I hope to see you at the next Autogefühl episode.